All right, so review for quiz number 12. Um, what you're going to notice is I am not going to do any problems that just say factor. There are going to be problems on your quiz that just say factor, uh, but I'm not going to do any of them because to do factoring problems and then solving problems is redundant. It's like doing the same thing again, right? So I don't need to do four factoring and then four solving. It's like doing eight of the same thing. So I don't want to do that. We're just going to do solving, and in doing solving, we'll be practicing the factoring as well, okay? So here we go. Very first problem that we're going to try out right here, solving 25k squared minus 4. So whenever you have two terms, you're always going to want to ask yourself, is this a difference of two squares or is it a GCF problem, okay? Um, so a difference of two squares means that I can, first off, notice there's a minus sign in the middle, so that's a difference, right? But then I have two terms, and I want to ask myself, can I rewrite these terms as something squared, okay? So how do I rewrite 25k squared as something squared? 5k, all right, so we got 5k there. And what about 4? Two. So once I do that, I'm pretty much set. Now, I'm going to write down the definition on the right side. You guys do not have to do it if you don't want to. But the difference of two squares, if you can write that, you should be able to automatically write the factor A minus B, A plus B. All right? So that's the definition for the difference of two squares. So that means what I have right there in parentheses, I'm going to write as 5k minus 2, 5k plus 2, equal to 0. And then I get to solve both. Okay? So the reason why I get to solve both is, again, you guys don't have to write the stuff on the right side. This is just me reminding you guys. There's a zero product property. Okay, bless you. And that's what allows me to say if two things are multiplying and they're equal to zero, then either the first thing is equal to zero or the second thing is equal to zero or both. Okay? So I'm not going to write this anymore in any of the other problems. It's just a real quick reminder of what you were supposed to know for uh, solving. So that, that allows me, this little property allows me to rewrite the following. 5k minus 2 equals 0, 5k plus 2 equals 0. I keep messing up on that 5 there. So, I'm allowed to split up my factor into two pieces because of the zero product property. That's from Algebra 1. Okay? Now all you got to do is solve, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's solve. So the left side, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I get 5k equals to 2, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and that's going to give me one of my answers. That's 2 fifths. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to solve for k. So we'll subtract by 2. So that gives me 5k equals to negative 2. And then just divide everything by 5, and you'll get your second answer. That's negative 2 fifths. So your solution for this um, is there. I mean, you can just put boxes around both answers, and I'm fine with that. Um, but uh, we should get k equal to negative 2 fifths, comma, 2 fifths. All right? So this is one where you're factoring using a difference of two squares. All right? Um, the next one we do is going to be a GCF problem, I think. And then we're going to do two of the X methods. An easier one and a harder one. Any questions on this one? Difference of two squares? Remember, the reason why you know it's a difference of two squares, first off, there must be a minus in the middle. It has to be a difference, right? If there's a plus, then there's no way that's a difference of two squares. Okay? If there's a minus, there's a chance. Then you look at your two terms and you ask yourself, can you rewrite them as something squared in each case? Okay, If you can, great. Write them out and then follow that little green pattern right there, right? A minus B, A plus B. Write it out and solve. Okay? Uh, my students from first period said that from here down, they said, that's easy. 
They're like, the hard part is factoring. And I said, yeah, the hard part's always factoring. Um, the easy part is once you have it factored. That's why yesterday's homework, the front side was easier to do than the back side, right? Because the front side had, had everything done for you already. Okay? Which, by the way, I think I forgot to give you the assignment, so I'll give that to you. Um, all right, so here's the next problem. We're doing the same thing we're solving, okay? Notice there's only two terms, right? So again, you got to ask yourself, is it a difference of two squares or is it just a GCF problem? So you look at this and you're like, well, there's a minus in the middle, so that's a difference. There are two terms there, so okay. Um, can I write 2x squared as something squared? Can so I... So, so if I write this, is that 2x squared? No. no, that's 4x squared, right? Is there any way that I can write the number 2 as something squared? No. no. So that means this is not a difference of two squares. Okay? So this is a GCF problem, so you're going to take out whatever they have in common. So what do they have in common? 2x. A 2x. So let's take that out. And then uh, on the inside, when you get 2x squared and you take out a 2x from it, you have an x minus, and then 4x uh, taking out a 2x or factoring out, meaning dividing, you end up with just a 2. So there you are. You have your factors. According to the zero product property, I can rewrite this as 2x equal to 0, x minus 2 equal to 0. Now solve both of them, and you're done. So we're going to divide the first one by 2. That gives me x equals 0. On the right side, I'm going to add 2. And that gives me x equal to 2. So my two answers are 0 and 2. Now I just want to remind you guys, tomorrow you'll have some problems like this, and then you'll have some problems that don't say equal 0. They're just going to be like 2x squared minus 4x and it's just going to say factor. So all you have to do is just factor them, okay? You don't have to actually solve anything. So pay attention to the instruction. If the instructions just say factor, then just factor. You'll stop right here, okay? Because there won't be anything that it's equal to. But if it says that it's equal to zero and you've got to solve, then you've got to keep going, okay? So this is a GCF problem. So the first one was a difference of two squares. This is a GCF. Now we're going to do two x method problems one that's easier one that's harder okay because there's always two types the ones where a is equal to one those are the easier ones and the ones where a is equal to something else those are the harder ones. okay so this is three terms when you see three terms that makes it a trinomial trinomials uh, require x methods so we're going to do that now my A, my B, and my C term are right there. A is 1, B is 4, C is negative 21. On the top of your X method, you're going to multiply A times C. That's negative 21. And on the bottom, you're going to put your B term. That's a positive 4. Okay? Now you're going to think of two numbers that multiply negative 21 that add up to positive 4. What would those be? 7 and negative 3. <coughs> So you have 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. That's good. 7 minus 3 is a positive 4. That's good as well. Uh, since A is equal to 1, I do not have to divide. So these are my factors. So I'm going to write M plus 7. M minus 3. And again, this is now what we would consider the easy part of the problem, right? Once it's factored, it's not supposed to be hard anymore to do. The factoring is the hard part. So I'm going to put m plus 7 equals 0, m minus 3 equals 0, and I solve both. Now, remember, these things that I'm doing right now, this is what you learn in Algebra 1 like the first week. This is what I mean by these are easier to do, right? This is literally the beginning of Algebra 1, what we're doing at this point. So when we subtract 7 on both sides, we get m equal to negative 7. On the other side, we just add 3 to both sides, and we get m equal to 3. So my two answers are negative 7 
and three. Okay, so the hard part is always factoring. The easier part is solving once you've done the hard work, right? So hopefully if you could get it to this point, you don't struggle and do the rest incorrectly. This should hopefully be a win once you get to this point. All you got to do is solve, okay? Again, this is considered an easy X method because my A term is a 1, right? My A term is 1. I don't have to divide anything out. Um, if my A term is not a 1, I do have to divide, and that's what's going to happen on this next problem. And you'll notice, first off, uh, this one looks kind of weird, but uh, you should notice it's not equal to 0, okay? It's not equal to 0, so I have to do that. So 10R squared minus 3 equals to 13R. There will be some problems like this on your test, so please make sure you, when you see this, it doesn't freak you out. Okay, you got to move everything over. <coughs> Oops, that's not a negative 13. Negative 13R on both sides. So minus 13R. This becomes 10R squared minus 13R minus 3 equals 0. So that's your first step to making sure you have the right setup. Now, I notice I have three terms. My A term is uh, 10, my B term is negative 13, my C term is negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do the X method for this. A times C is negative 30, and B is negative 13. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 30 that add up to uh, negative 13. So let me see, negative 10, you said, positive 3. So negative 3. So negative 10, negative 3. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So that doesn't work. Go ahead. Negative 15 and a positive 2. That'll work. All right, negative 15 and a positive 2 should work because negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So, again, a couple of reasons why this is a little tougher problem. First off, it's not set equal to 0. Secondly, A is 10. Third, your, your gut reaction of 10 and 3 is not correct, right? <laughs> because um, you're thinking 10 and 3 make 13, 10 and 3 make 30. When I multiply, that has to be it. But then when you test it, it didn't work. So you have to think of a different option, right? Um, so like I said, this is a tougher problem overall. Now, we have that done, but since A is 10, I'm going to have to divide by it, okay? Since A is not just a 1, I have to divide by it. So this gives me a negative 3 halves. And this gives me a positive 1 fifth, okay, once I simplify it. So here are my factors. It's x minus 3 halves, x plus 1 fifth equal to 0. Now, I know that you can solve from here. But the reason why I'm not going to do it is because I have to remind you how to fix the fractions because some of the problems you do may not ask you to solve. You're just going to have to factor properly. So i got to show you how to fix this little issue here, okay? This cannot be there. It has to go, this denominator has to go to the front. So this is 2x minus 3, 5x plus 1 equals 0. So on your test, if one of them just says factor, this is how it has to look if it just says factor. If you leave it like this one over here, you're going to get it wrong if it just says factor, okay? So that's why I'm doing it, just to kind of get you in practice of doing that out of habit, okay? Making sure you don't accidentally leave it in the wrong form. Now, at this point, since we are going to solve, we're going to go ahead and solve for both of them, okay? So 2x minus 3 equals 0. 5x plus 1 equals 0. Let me give you about a minute. Go ahead and solve this. Okay, so go ahead and solve these. I'm going to do that really quick over here and then just kind of show you the answer.
just as a reminder, I was supposed to start exit tickets this week, but um, I um, I did not because of the fact that uh, we're gonna have like a sh we have a short week plus we have seniors missing on Thursday, so um, you guys are gonna be at that future day. So um, I just figured we'll start next week. So next week we'll be starting exit tickets. Okay. Um, so exit tickets are basically I'm gonna give you a piece of paper and then it, I may like at one time say okay here's the problem do it real quick for me. You'll kind of work on it. We'll we'll continue. I'm not gonna show you the answers for it or anything. We'll just kind of continue. I may ask you to do another one at the very end before you leave. You're handing me your ticket to leave the class, right? I may pick it up early. We'll see. But it, it's a check. It doesn't it doesn't hurt your grade at all. It's just for me checking to see how how you're progressing. That's all. So all right, here we go. Here's your answers. I know online if you're watching this video, your answers would have been there already, but do you guys hear? This is what your answer was supposed to look like. Okay, so you should have a three halves and a negative one fifth. So you can just write it out nicely here if you'd like. Again, your answers do not have to be in numerical order if you write them like this. It is preferred. Like I appreciate it if you do it, but um, it doesn't have to be. Okay? So, this is it for everything new. Like, this is all you have to know for the quiz with the exception of two questions. This is one of them. Okay? This is a question that I told you guys last quiz. I said, there's no way you can miss this. This is too easy to miss, and yet I still got 50% people missing it. Okay? <laughs> Finding the y-intercept, if I give you a standard form, it should be really easy really really easy what's the answer to this one seven no it's just seven that's all it is okay so you're gonna get one question like this on your homework i know your homework on your quiz okay i'm hoping that a hundred percent of you guys get it right okay it's the last number that doesn't have a letter that's your y-intercept okay um, I mean, it can't be any easier than that, but like I said, some people were like plugging in random numbers into the equation and solving. I, I didn't know what was going on. Um, it should be very simple. Look at the very last number. That's your answer. Okay? I had people who took this quiz and didn't really get much right, but they got those right because those were very easy, right? Um, and then the other stuff they struggled with. But... But yeah, this should not be something you're missing. Now, the next spiral question, the very last thing we're doing today, is this one. And we want to spiral this because we saw a lot of people on the test, you know, they did this, they did it right. Then there was a lot of people that just didn't do these problems because I think they didn't want to try it. They maybe didn't know what they were doing. So I want to remind you guys of what you're supposed to do. You're going to get one question like this on your test, okay? That's the very last two questions, actually, uh, the ones that we just did. The very last ones on your quiz will be these types, okay? So, just to remind you, if you need to find the vertex and your equation is in standard form, this is standard form, then it's made up of two pieces. Your axis of symmetry, x <coughs> equal negative b over 2a, that's your x value, and then your y value. You find your y value by plugging it into your equation, whatever you find for x, okay? So this is like a two-step process. So let's find our, our axis of symmetry, our x value, <coughs> negative b over 2a. So x is equal to negative of b, that's 4, over 2 times a, that's negative 2. Okay, well, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is a positive 1. So I'm going to put that answer right here. 1 comma something. All right? Now, I'm going to get my x value, and I'm going to plug it into my equation. So that's y equal to negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 3. Now, you can punch that into your calculator straight through. It'll give you your answer. But if you want to work it out step at a time, here we go. Negative 2 times 1 squared is 1. Plus 4 times 1 is 4 minus 3. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 4 minus 3. 
negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So here's your answer. This is your vertex. You'll have one question like that on your quiz.